So in today's lesson, we're going to be looking at rationalising denominators. What this means is that occasionally the denominator of a fractional expression is absurd. Having an irrational denominator can occasionally make things more difficult, such as recognising and combining like terms. More on this in a minute. Let's say we have 1 over root 2, and we want to get rid of this root 2 from the denominator. It's just unsightly. So how would we go about it? Well, in order to make sure our new fraction will be equivalent, we need to find a number that we can multiply to the numerator and the denominator that will cancel out the root 2. Hmm, what could we multiply the square root of 2 with in order to cancel out the square root? What if we used another root 2? The square root of 2 multiplied by itself would just give us 2. That works! That means we'll have to multiply the numerator by the square root of 2 as well. We'll have the square root of 2 over 2. But that's okay, we just wanted to rationalise the denominator, so the fact that the numerator is irrational isn't a problem. Now you might be wondering, why do we do this? What's the point of rationalising the denominator? Why can't we just leave it the way it is? Well, it used to be more of an issue before we had calculators. In the old days, if a mathematician wanted to convert a fraction into a decimal, they had to do it by hand, with long division. Having a third, an irrational number, as a denominator made things even more challenging than they already were. So it became customary to rationalise the denominators, literally make the denominator a rational rather than an irrational number, in order to make computations easier. Nowadays, with calculators, an irrational denominator doesn't pose as much of a problem as it used to, but rationalising the denominator is still a useful thing to do in many instances. Say, for example, you wanted to see if you could simplify this expression, 6 over the square root of 3 plus the square root of 3. If we just leave this fraction untouched, then there isn't really anything we can do with this expression. These are not like terms. They cannot be combined or simplified. We just have to leave it as it is. But let's see what happens when we rationalise the denominator of this fraction. If we follow the rule, all we have to do is multiply both the numerator and the denominator of the fraction with the square root of 3. We'll get 6 root 3 over 3 plus another root 3. Now that the denominator has been rationalised, we can actually cancel out the 6 on the top with a 3 on the bottom. Both 6 and 3 can divide by 3, so if we factor 3 out of the fraction, we'll have 2 root 3 plus root 3. And now we can see that these two terms are actually like terms. 2 root 3 plus another root 3 would be equal to 3 root 3. See how rationalising the denominator allowed us to get to a much simpler fraction than the one we originally had? Let's try one last example. Suppose we had the square root of 6 over the square root of 2. If we multiply the numerator and the denominator by the square root of 2, we would get root 6 times root 2 over 2. Root 6 times root 2 is root 12, so we would get the square root of 12 over 2. But wait, remember in the last video we learned how to simplify thirds? We might be able to simplify the square root of 12 in the same way. 12 has factors of 3 and 4. Well, 3 isn't a perfect square, but 4 is. If we square root 4, we'll have 2 times root 3 over 2. The 2s can cancel out, so we're left with root 3. Now, if you were paying close attention in my last video, some of you might have noticed an even better shortcut. Remember how radicals can be combined if they're being multiplied or divided? That means that the square root of 6 over the square root of 2 is actually the same as saying the square root of 6 over 2, which is 3. Well, that was easy. So basically, in order to rationalise an expression where the third is the denominator, we need to multiply both sides of the fraction by the third that we want to cancel out. Then, all we need to do is check that our answer is in simplest form. That's it! Try a few questions of your own. Make sure your final answer is written in simplest terms, either by taking out common factors, or splitting the radicand into perfect squares so that you can simplify. There is one more level to rationalising denominators, and that's when the radical in the denominator is being added or subtracted by another number, but that involves slightly more advanced mathematics, so we won't be covering it in this unit. In my next video, we're going to be dealing with expressions where the index number or radical is made up of unknown variables. If you enjoyed this video or learned something new today, then please give me a big thumbs up. Otherwise, keep up the hard work, stay curious, and I'll see you next time at Sneeze Teachers. Bye!